And with that, we welcome you to lcpioneers.com live, presented by PioStream, broadcasting with you four days a week, Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Facebook Live, and available to access on demand at youtube.com slash lcpios as we uh, continue to have conversations with student-athletes, coaches, different members from our alumni community, as well as members of the Lewis and Clark College community at large. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Goff. I'm the play-by-play -play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark College. You can find us at lcpioneers.com. We are a member of the Northwest Conference, competing with other institutions from throughout Northwest Oregon and the state of Washington, and a member of NCAA Division III. And so with that, the opportunity to compete with over 430 institutions nationwide. Our student athletes a chance to go all over the country to compete, and it's really a unique opportunity that we're certainly appreciative of. And uh, competition on halt right now with the coronavirus pandemic still affecting our country. No competition from the Northwest Conference until at least January 1st, 2021. Uh, we continue to update everything that's going on with the NCAA and uh, other entities like the Northwest Conference on our website, lcpioneers.com slash COVID. Uh, today, excited for our conversation, though, because it does exist in the medical realm, in the world of research. We'll talk to Lindsay Ehrman, who is a class of 2017 graduate from Lewis and Clark softball, a chance to catch up with her and see what she's been doing since leaving Palatine Hill. Talk about softball memories, talk about chemistry memories, and some of the things that she was able to do uh, when she first came to Lewis and Clark through her four years. Uh, we'll do that in just a few moments. Do invite you to connect with us. You can ask questions in our Facebook comments below on Facebook Live. You can also email us anytime, sports at lclark.edu, an opportunity for you to get a hold of us and have the opportunity to share some thoughts or ask questions for any future guests or suggest future guests as well. Uh, also, we are on Twitter and Instagram. You can find us on both platforms, LC Pioneers on each, and do invite you to check out our featured student athletes of the week. This is our Pioneers of the Week, and because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, uh, generally these are focused around uh, you know, the accomplishments on the field or on the court in the pool, etc. Right now, instead, those are going to be um, just kind of you know, Q&A type style things that we have the opportunity to do with our student athletes, including those who have been on the show prior. And so we'll continue to give you an opportunity to kind of you know, get those stories, even though with the pandemic, things look a little bit different right now. And as I mentioned too, all of our shows available to watch on demand. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash lcpios, as we do have those available to watch uh, anytime. We have been keeping those updated since March 31st, believe it or not. Last day of March is when we were uh, I'm starting the show. It seems like so long ago. Uh, with that said, let's bring in our guest for today. Again, a Lewis and Clark graduate from the class of 2017. We are excited to bring in Lindsay Yerman to the show. Lindsay, appreciate you taking the time to join us and have the opportunity to kind of share some you know, memories about your time on Palatine Hill. Uh, but as I tend to do with most of our student athletes who join us uh, on the show, I always kind of like to look at the, the reason why you chose Lewis and Clark. For you, what was that? Well, uh, doing travel ball and stuff in high school, like I, I wanted to continue playing softball. And in high school, I actually kind of knew that I wanted to be a chemistry major and kind of work in the industrial chemistry industry. Um, eventually, I didn't quite know exactly what I wanted to do. I just knew I kind of liked more away from the educational research. Um, and I just kind of liked the idea of more industrial chemistry and like applying that. Um, so I was looking for a school that had a good chemistry program and also I could continue playing softball. And it happened that I was just Googling, you know, good chemistry degrees and uh, kind of on the West Coast, I wanted to say closer to home. And Lewis and Clark kind of fell on my radar and they were going to some of the showcase tournaments. And so I started emailing the coach and it, um, it so happened that the head coach, Shauna, actually was the graduate assistant to my travel ball coach. So they kind of knew each other and it kind of ended up working out really well. Um, I came and visited the school and I loved it. Just the campus is beautiful. You can't beat the education. So uh, yeah, that's kind of how I pick Lewis and Clark. A great opportunity for student athletes, the chance to come to Lewis and Clark and compete. And as you talked about, I mean, Portland and the mixture of being able to uh, be on such a beautiful campus day in and day out. Um, 
I think also what I really like about the softball field at Lewis and Clark at the Houston Sports Complex is it has that beautiful enclosure, the panorama of trees. It really is a unique place to mm -hmm. compete. Uh, with softball, you know, when was it that you kind of realized like, hey, I'm pretty good at this sport and really latched on to the sport to carry you through being a collegiate student athlete? Um, I mean, I've played baseball, softball since I, I could walk and I just love the sport and probably kind of in, in high school, it's, you kind of had to make a decision like, am I good enough? Do I want to do it? And then really start putting in the work and the drive to get recruited and get better. Um, so kind of probably in high school, you kind of got to decide, especially just with the way softball works um, competitively, you kind of have to start that recruiting process either in middle school for some people or high school. And I was kind of, I mean, I'm still wasn't very strong as considering uh, some of the other people that I played with, I've never really been the strongest. So it kind of in high school, I was kind of figured that, oh, I, I can play and I, I, can, I can do it. I just kind of had to put my mind to it and really push myself to get better. Lindsay Ehrman, our guest on lcpioneers.com live, a former Lewis and Clark softball student athlete uh, from the class of 2017. Uh, I really enjoy softball season. Uh, the spring season is hectic, but the nice thing is, is you kind of get locked into one game at a time, whether I'm working at the baseball field or the softball field, and your games are always incredibly entertaining. Um, what's some of your favorite memories when you look back at your time as a softball student athlete that really stick back to you, uh, stick with you today? Um, probably just all the, the road trips. I know one was my freshman year. We took travel down to LA in February for some preseason games. And I think it was Saturday night. Um, one of the seniors was like looking up our flight information and the coaches were going around checking on the rooms and it was like, 10 30 or something like that at night and uh one of the seniors realized that our flight got booked for like 6 a.m instead of 6 p.m on sunday so we had to get up at like four in the morning with all our stuff packed we had to go all the way through airport security and sit at the gate and then they told us our flight got changed and we had games to play on sunday so we went straight from the airport back in the vans and drove all the way. I think we we're playing like Occidental. Um, and we ended up playing them all day. We've been up since four in the morning, played all day, and then got our flight rebooked. And uh, we went to fly home. Well, there was a massive snowstorm in Portland on that day. And so our flight got canceled. And so we had to like go from there and drive all the way into like stay in downtown LA at some random hotel that we had to book last minute and we eventually got back I think like a Monday or something Monday night like super late they ended up canceling classes all day Monday and we got back like super late and I remember just everyone was just exhausted and just over it and we we're walking back to the dorms with like all our suitcases and stuff and bags and going through all the slush and snow and it was <laughs> It was kind of terrible at the time. But it's, it's funny when you look back at it, like all the, the memories and like how fun it, what a good memory it was, ended up being. Um, at the time, it was kind of annoying and we're kind of bummed we missed all the snow. But yeah, that one was, that was pretty fun. And then playing wide is um, probably one of the ones that most of the people um, that played that year could probably agree to is when we beat Linfield my sophomore year. Um, we hadn't beat them in like 13 years and we beat them for the first time and that was pretty cool. It's kind of like, a, we were always capable of beating people, but that one kind of solidified to like everybody. Like we are good, we can beat anybody. And I think um, it kind of was a turning point in the season for us and that was pretty cool. Now, I will admit that one of the things that has always struck me about softball is the noise coming out of your dugout is insane. <laughs> There's always cheers that are going on, and for some reason, yours still sticks with me today. Where they're like, Lindsay, Lindsay Yearman. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you'll go home after a softball doubleheader and you'll still hear them in your head. What is, in your opinion, the best softball cheer that you ever had in your time? Oh man, um, <laughs> I think I think it was my junior year. We started like remixing songs instead of kind of like the typical 
softball cheers and we had a I think we had one for Janae that was pretty funny and I think we we remixed the song like Jordan Belper for uh, Hannah Delpra and I think the other teams like they're kind of impressed but they get kind of annoyed because we just do the same ones over and over but we it just was they were so much fun to do that it's kind of different than just the classic like ones that you learn from when you're 12 so a couple of those <laughs> um, I think in like middle school, I took like an honors chemistry course. Uh, oh no, it was high school, my freshman year. I took an honors chemistry course and it kind of all clicked to me. Like it just made a lot of sense and I thought it was really interesting. And I've always been kind of, um, I like to figure things out in detail and uh, like figuring out the unknown. And one of my favorite labs we did was, uh, we got like an unknown substance and we did a bunch of tests to figure out what it was. And I just thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And I was like, man, I want to do this for a living. And so I kind of like, when you're younger, you're, I was like, oh, those CSI shows are so cool. That's what I want to do. And then you get older and you realize it's like not quite the same, but uh, just in general, the idea behind it is really interesting to me. So I kind of took my chemistry and science courses more seriously um, since then. And I kind of followed it in the college so I still liked it. So it's kind of how I would pick chemistry. I, I knew from pretty early that like that's what I wanted to go to college for. So it was kind of nice. Well, and, and then I'm curious too, because a lot of times when you hear the detractors to a liberal arts experience, it's always, well, it's not practical. You don't get hands-on. But I, I've seen that not be the case with Lewis and Clark in general, but specifically with chemistry. I have to imagine that with the, the labs and things that I've seen from afar, whether it's in media, it seems like you really do get a chance to have your hand in things early. Uh, how does that mm -hmm. kind of work with, with your experience? Uh, it's definitely hands-on, and it was a lot of more one-on-one. -on -one. So um, some people I know that went to other bigger colleges, they're like, oh, yeah, I have a 500-person lecture course. And I tell people like my senior year, my kind of upper division classes, we had six people in our lecture and six or five in our lab. So it's, you can't really get by by just saying like, oh, I don't want to do the work. I don't want to do this lab. I'm just going to let my partner do it. It's, you, you're doing it yourself. You're physically doing it yourself and you have to really understand the material. And all of the chemistry professors, there, are very, very, they'll work with you. They're awesome. Um, they're more than willing to help and offer their assistance in any way, shape, or form. So it's, it's kind of nice getting that one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on. I think even my freshman year, um, you're able to do stuff yourself. It's not like a, you're in a group of 10. Or it's you're in a, maybe a group of two or three, and you're really forced. Um, if you didn't want to do it, you're kind of forced into doing it yourself. But I was definitely always kind of like I kind of wanted to do it all because I thought it was cool. So... <laughs> You're watching lcpioneers.com live. We are on Tuesday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. Uh, doing a pilot test today on Instagram as well, so you can always find us there, LC Pioneers, our handle. And then if you miss any of the show you want to watch on demand, you can do so anytime, youtube.com slash lcpios. Lindsay Yerman, our guest, a class of 2017 graduate of the softball program. So let's update everyone since you graduated. Uh, kind of what are you up to now professionally? So after graduation, I, uh, I was working up in Portland for like almost two years. I was working in some, doing some water testing for a water lab. And then I uh, got the chance to move back home um, to a company I actually had an internship with when I was at Lewis and Clark um, during the summer. I had an internship at home and I got a chance to move back and get a job in really the field that I wanted to be in. Um, so right now I'm working in the analytical chemistry department. Uh, for Charles River Laboratories, we do um, safety assessment testing for pharmaceutical drugs that are being developed or looking at being developed. 
So we're in the really early stages of development. And uh, so we provide services for companies to contract us out and we'll run testing um, on that. So what my department does specifically is we make methods and we validate methods for testing those drugs. Um, so we work with really any kind of drug from like Alzheimer's to asthma to whatever they're trying to test to very specific, very rare disease drugs. Um, so we definitely have been been busy throughout all of this. Yeah, I mean, with the pandemic, I'm curious, mm -hmm. you know, we've had a couple of, of uh, different people from the medical field on since the pandemic began in mid-March, uh, mostly medical students or someone maybe in administration or the back end of healthcare. We haven't had anyone more in the research. I'm, I'm just curious you know, for your work, how have you been impacted by the pandemic? Um, so the, the whole industry, it has been harder to get things developed and shipped and it's been kind of a delay in that. And um, some of the stuff has definitely taken like a backseat to the COVID research is being pushed ahead of other research and companies are prioritizing their own research um, with COVID. So they're kind of readjusting their schedule. So we definitely saw an influx of um, stuff that was kind of pushed ahead of other things. Uh, but we have not really slowed down too much. Uh, the research doesn't ever really stop no matter what the drug is. So it's been, it's been cool. It's very unfortunate what's been happening, but um, it's definitely kind of cool being directly involved with it. Yeah, and we linked to a newsroom feature from lclark.edu because you were included in that and showing some of the ways that Lewis and Clark alumni have had an impact on COVID. And uh, I will personally tell you thank you because uh, as a pandemic continues, it takes all of those in the healthcare world, whether they're working directly with patients or in your case, trying to help find something that's gonna make this better. Um, we're certainly appreciative of that, Lindsay. I, I can't say thank you enough, and, and, and I'm happy that it's kind of the kind of work that you're enjoying. So, um, you know, that's, that's very thankful, uh, or we're really, really grateful for, for what you do. <laughs> um, let's close with this. Uh, we are produced by PioStream, which is the video streaming arm of Lewis and Clark Athletics. Um, you were one of the student workers who helped us with all the aspects of that. Um, out of curiosity, you know, from a firsthand perspective, what do you what do you find were some of the things that you really enjoyed about your experience while being a work-study student and working on the video stream? Um, definitely, uh, I kind of started out being like the video camera person where you just kind of like follow all the, all the what's happening with the camera. And then I kind of moved to like volleyball. I did libero tracking and basketball. I did like the official scorebook and just kind of learning more about sports that I was never directly involved in or knew all the rules to. You kind of, have to learn them to do some of that stuff and it was it's really cool seeing like how other people are equally as passionate about their sports as I am about softball um, so that was that's kind of cool and then you really understand like kind of more about the game they play and to at least understand what's going on a little more it kind of makes everything a little more interesting well and that's the one thing that we talked about too I have a lot of softball student athletes who work for us and that thing is you're going to be able to have an impact on their sports just like they will when softball season comes mm -hmm. around. So you, I appreciate you saying that. Um, Lindsay Yerman, thanks so much for taking some time out on your Wednesday to join us. Uh, best of luck with all the research that you're doing going forward, and we appreciate your time on lcpioneers.com live. Of course. Thank you for having me. Fun conversation for sure. Uh, Lindsay uh, was one of our best student workers and did a tremendous amount of stuff for us. Um, can't thank her enough and what she was able to do to help us out and I get everything set up for uh, you know pile stream is it's a continuing continuing uh, process I mean you're talking about something that you know we started in 2010 and now you know it's turned into one of the best small college broadcasts in the country and we continue to strive for that kind of thing including the show um, lcpioneers.com live presented by pile stream on all of our platforms too and today like I said uh, trying to stream on Instagram for the first time as well. If you did get a chance to see the show on Instagram, uh, feel free to send us a message. Let us know uh, if it was something you enjoyed, if it's something that we should continue to put on Instagram Live as well. And you can do so in the chat function or better yet, message us LC Pioneers on Instagram. So the start of the week 
We're halfway through, and now we have two more guests for the rest of our week. That includes Eric Del Prado. He is an assistant coach for baseball. He'll join us on Friday following an appearance by Brian Smith, who a transfer junior a year, a year ago had an immediate impact on Lewis and Clark men's basketball. And so now heading into his senior year, team leadership certainly falling on his shoulders, a transfer from Portland and Really excited to have a chance to talk to him about what the team is doing as, again, all competition, including early winter for men's and women's basketball, men's and women's swimming, has been halted for the Northwest Conference. So we'll talk to him on Thursday and have a chance to get firsthand what he's doing, what the team is doing to get ready for the 2020-21 season when it starts. Uh, you can keep updated at lcpioneers.com for everything related to fall 2020 semester, COVID response, and then certainly uh, for this show as we have it archived at youtube.com slash lcpio. So until we have Brian tomorrow, I'm Ryan Goff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us. And big thanks to Lindsay Ehrman for joining us as well. We'll be back tomorrow with more lcpioneers.com live presented by PioStream. Goodbye, everybody. to join us. It's time to explore Lewis and Clark. My favorite spot on campus is like right outside the Dovecote, little benches and there's flowers growing there and you can get a little coffee at the Dovecote and sit there. My favorite spot on campus is definitely the weight room. Um, I get that uh, everybody loves like the gardens or uh, the manor house, but um, our facilities for athletics here are actually amazing too. And the weight room is definitely my favorite spot. My favorite spot on campus um, would either be the Glade outside of the athletic facilities or South Campus. What is my favorite spot on campus? I really like the back porch of the manor house. Um, it looks out on Mount Hood and on a clear day, it's super beautiful just to sit around with friends.